Hey guys, what's going on? Today I am on the boat with my dad and my mom and we got Vic behind the camera. We have a chum slick full of ballyhoo right now. My dad's got the cast net ready to cast net some ballyhoo. Earlier we were anchored in like 40 feet and there was a ton of jellyfish and no ballyhoo and now we are in 10 feet of water and there are ballyhoo everywhere. So, you ready dad? I'm ready. Let's see it. Okay. So this is what we're going after. This is our bait for the day. Nice ballyhoo. These are candy. Another like dozen. We're doing good. We're getting some good throws. Getting a few. Got a nice haul on that one. Yeah, that's a good throw. How many yeah. are you getting that throw, bro? So we have about three dozen live in the live well already, so now we're going to put the rest of these in the cooler to use as dead bait. All right, Dad. First fish of the day. He bit once. I tried to I tried to get him, but I missed him. I dropped right back down, and a couple seconds later, he had it again. So we'll see what he is. He's just kind of coming up. He's not really fighting that hard. It's a shark. Dog on it. Oh, he smells. You smell him? I uh, don't know what kind that is. He's got a lot of cool spots on him, though. Doesn't he? Yeah. He's got an elongated nose. And look at how much his jaw's protruding, too. Very cool looking shark. Yeah. Okay, we're going to let him go. You want to yeah. say anything else? Yeah. Oh, baby. There you go. He's not that small, Vic. No? No. Here, give me the butt, please. I love Woo! that sound. I'm gonna let you tighten the dragon. He's gonna jump. I'll help you. Oh, my gosh. He's going crazy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at all the baits that jumped when he jumped. You saw that? Yep. So sick. Look at him. What was that? Did you just see is that? Is something chasing him? Oh my god, what is that? It might be a shark chasing him. What the heck is happening? That is the craziest sailfish jumping ever. It's Something's chasing it. Something's chasing it. It might be a mako. Oh my god. Please roll that for Rodden. What's going on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is happening? Is he getting eaten? Well, it's coming right towards the boat. <gasps> I think he's getting eaten. So we are drifting in 130 feet of water. And Victor had a ballyhoo out on this. And he goes, something just blew up on that bait back there. And I grabbed the rod and he goes, it's a sail, it's a sail. And we've got a sail on now. I don't know what just happened. You know what was happening? He just freaked out. Yeah, but stuff is jumping around him. I don't know. There was like things jumping out of the water around him. It was very strange. I think he might have spooked another sailfish. Maybe it was two sailfish. Two jumping. sailfish? Yeah. He's gonna jump. <gasps> He's right there! It's not big enough. You don't think so? No. It's probably 30 pounds. Just wait until you get him up. 63 inches is long. I can grab him, Brian. Oh, you want to grab him? Okay. Here he is. Here. He's not that small. No, no. He's, he's pretty decent size. He's Except hooked. there's a. He's there's, good. Yeah, he is hooked, actually. Oh, see? Oh, there, there we go. He goes. There we go. Grab him. Perfect, perfect. That was a jumper. <laughs> wow. You couldn't have asked for a better He release. was hooked perfectly just on the bill with just one hook. Victor's fishing this double um, wire rig. 
I don't even think he was hooked. I think it was wrapped around his wrapped bill. Wrapped around his bill. I guess neither of the hooks were even in it, and he was just wrapped around his bill. And as soon as Victor pulled straight up on the line, it pulled right off of his bill, and he swam away perfect. We didn't even have to worry about reviving him. Didn't have to touch him at all. That was like the best release possible on a sailfish ever. And that was quick. We didn't even have to move the boat anywhere. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, and you got a really good show. That one, that was probably the most jumps I've ever seen out of a sailfish. Yeah, that one was jumping. I don't know what was going on. That was crazy. There was so much splashing going on that it looked like something was like attacking it. It was very weird. Good job, right. Brooke. Let's get lines back out. Good job, everyone. What does mom <laughs> think? That was spectacular. Quite the show, right? Yeah, it was beautiful. Let's see what's going on. All right, well, Victor was just messing around with a rod, and he had a ballyhoo that was 15 feet behind the boat. And he goes, how crazy, oh, he's coming right, he's right there, he's right there. Oh my gosh. He goes, how crazy would it be if a sailfish came in, ate right next to the boat, and a kingfish is right next to the boat trying to eat this bait. Oh, he's on it, he's on it. Come on. He's on it, he's Oh, on it. yeah. He's still chasing it, look at it go. Cut me off. Oh, he cut you off. Cut me off. We got Deb hooked up. I think it was a kingfish. I saw it come up top and smack it. Coach me, Brett. You're doing good. You can put you that. Can put it there on you your go. Hip. Yeah. It's got a nice pink cushion. Kingfish, Brett? I haven't seen it yet. It looks long. Don't really get the I noise. swear. I bet you it's the same king that's been messing with us the whole time. I feel like he's just following the boat the you whole think time. So? Yeah. That means he ate all three of the baits then. It'd be cool to see him in its stomach. He's coming up. Oh yeah, King. Nice and easy, roll down. There you go. It's coming. Oh, oh it's yeah. mackerel. Here, you don't have Oh, to it's a big mackerel. Flip it? Big mackerel. No, no. no. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a big zero. No, gaff it, gaff it. It's barely hooked. Barely hooked. Put it in the water or just bring it in. There we go. <laughs> Look at the size of that zero. That is a giant zero. Good job, Dad. <laughs> That That's might have a been... huge zero! Oh my gosh. Nice one, Mom. He's that... got the one J hook right in his belly. That's... Look at that. This is the best of the three mackerel, too. Um, can you give me the pliers, please? Okay. Another one of the mackerel species. Earlier we had a kingfish messing with us, but this is a zero mackerel. They got that long straight line on them, and they're also broader. If this was a, a Spanish mackerel compared to it, it would have been it would be skinnier. Well, he's going in the cooler. We're gonna eat this guy. Good job, mom. Yeah, this is the time of year you get the big ones. Good job. Sometimes when they come up and they hit a bait so fast that they kind of miss the bait, and then just the hooks get them elsewhere, and he was hooked in the belly. Woohoo! Mom's got a fish on the bottom rod. All by yourself on a ballyhoo. Maybe it'll be your mutton. You're doing good. Here it comes. Looking like a snapper. Oh, oh dad's got up. up. A mutton. He's not keeper, but you got a mutton. My dad's hooked up too. Woohoo, this was a good spot. How deep are we? We are in 130. Oh, the bottom is lit up. This is where we caught the sailfish too, was in 130. Victor's deflating this one. Oh, you got one too, Dad. Yeah, that was a good spot for Smaller. There goes that one. Oh, one. Yeah, he needs to be deflated too. Are you going back down already, Mom? Should I wait? No. No. no did you have a bait? Yeah, he didn't get it. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is with another fish, but she doesn't say anything. You have to be watching her and make sure she's got something. And this is on the same bait that you just caught the last one on. <laughs> yeah. Another mutton. Like the same size. Oh. He's a little bigger. No. no? In a bad way. See ya. Yeah, he swam down. That was two muttons on the same bait, Mom. Was that the belly? One of my favorite things to do is the vertical jig. My mom and my dad are fishing bottom. Victor's working some flat lines, and I am vertical jigging. And I just got hit on bottom, but I didn't hook up. Then I dropped down again, got hit on bottom, got a mutton. 
Oh, someone followed it up. Something huge. Oh, a sail. A sail, sail, sail. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to eat one of these oh free baits. He's going to eat a sail right there. Look, he's going to eat it's this bait right, right here. Hold on. Crap. Get it to him, man. Get it to him. Oh, he's eating that one. He's got oh. it. He's got it. <laughs> Is that a it's free one? one? It's the one you just threw in, oh, Brian. Oh no, Dad. <laughs> you gave him a free you one. You gave him a freebie. Oh. Oh. Alright, here's this guy. <laughs> we were all looking over because we thought that the sailfish was eating one of our baits. Little did we know, Brian let one go. A second he, he a second the, too soon. He ate the freebie. Yeah, he did. Hopefully he eats another bait. Oh my gosh, that is too cool. There he is, is he's right cool. there, he came that back. So Victor's letting out this um, flat line. He's still right there. Come on, Sale. Why, he's swimming over there, I don't know why. Oh, he, I got him. No, I don't. What the heck? Oh. There he is. <gasps> oh, so Come sick. on. He's all oh, he, he's got he got had his, to have gotten it. He's got his sail up. Come on. Oh my gosh. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Feels like he's tangled in the line. Oh, I got him. Yeah, he slurped yeah. at that time. Oh, I'm he's on. Oh. oh, he's going crazy. Oh, there he is. He's got it. Okay. He dropped it again. He dro hey, look, he's right there. You're kidding. No. I just wonder how these things can catch anything in the wild. <laughs> My dad is on. This is before we're about to move back in spots. We drifted out to like 160. The 130 depth's doing really good today, so I think we're gonna reel in after this fish and move back in shallower. Looks like a mutton. Is it bigger than your last one? Hope so. Nope, same size. Cooked nice though. Look how pretty. 17, 16? Yeah. 15. Yeah. Four, 15. 14 and 3 quarters. <coughs> he hit it nice and hard. Alright, where's Lynn? Oh. That's five short months. This is our fifth mutton. You hear that? They can hear it. So what Brooke's doing is she just popped its air bladder. To deflate him. To deflate it. And now he'll be able to go down in peace. Oops, sorry. Ready? There he goes. Good job. That's like the fifth mutton. And yeah. they've all been at an exact like 15 inch size too. They have to be 18 inches to keep and they've all been around 15 inches. Freaking big. It's a sale. Is it? Yeah. Just as we were gonna move. It's big. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. no. I don't know where it broke, but that oh, thing. Did? Yeah, that, that was a big one. That uh, was a big one. And, and, oh, there oh, he goes, he's, he's free jumping. Still jumping. I was reeling in. We're clearing out all the lines. Brian just caught that one mutton, and I'm reeling it in to try to um, put him in the live well. And you know what? He got wrapped around. I guess it got wrapped around its bill because this is way above my leader. Sometimes sailfish, they have awkward bodies. It gets wrapped all around them, and that's probably what happened. Nothing you can do about it, but that was cool. Just as we were leaving. It's a fishy day, huh? Mm-hmm. Three sales, three sailfish. One for three on sales. <laughs> you said she looked mad when she looked up. I said she's got to go, but she's got to go, and she just looked at me. <laughs> Those guys gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> they are trolling right into uh -oh. What are they doing? Oh, you got a group? Um, uh, a grouper or a mangrove? Keep rolling. Keep rolling. A red grouper. Well, there's a red grouper that Aww. Brooke's mom got. <laughs> Thank you. You got a show. <laughs> I need pliers. We were gonna move in shallower, but we decided to stay out deep. 
This is our first grouper of the day. We definitely got a variety going on. There we go. Little red grouper going back. See ya. Good job, Mom. She's doing good. No, he's on there. I got him. I got him. This was on a dead valley hill. I bet you it's going to be a, another Ciro or a, a kingfish. I see it. It's a king. Bigger king. Should we keep it? That's up to you. Oh, you're tangled with that rod. It's uh, got line on it. Should we keep it? Woo! I'll fry it up. Alright, the king. You want it or no? Yeah. Here you go. There we go, a nice headshot. Nice gap, Dad. Go put them right in the cooler. We don't need a big bloody mess on the boat. Good job, guys. Well, we got a mackerel catch and cook for dinner. We just need the one more species. We need the Spanish mac. We got the king, we got we the zero. Yeah, I'm gonna squirt it. We got soup. muttons, we got sailfish. That. It is an exciting day out here. That is for sure. Something yeah, else? we got something. This is with the circle hook, too. What is it gonna be? It's gonna be the Spanish Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shooting across yeah. the top of the surface. No, it's another king. Is it? Yeah, it's another king. He's small, you wanna let him go? I'm gonna flip this one into the boat, okay? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just like that, he's on the hook. Alright, get him out. Ready? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> See ya. There's no sense in keeping him. We got one, Brooks got one king for the cooler, a zero macro for the, for the cooler, right? Yeah, he was lively. We didn't need to keep him. No. And we got was, plenty of fish for dinner. He was hooked fine. Well, we haven't caught a fish in quite some time. We did a whole drift of nothing. What is it? It's what like a, is that? It's like a red grouper. Oh, it is a red grouper. Nice. I've never seen someone lift a grouper. Does it hurt? Oh. Uh, netting? No, he went down. All right, guys, so we are back home. We ended up catching two kingfish, that zero mackerel, like six undersized muttons, two undersized red groupers. We went one for three on sailfish. Oh, and my dad caught a shark. Really fun day out there. We fished a couple times in the last month, and we haven't had a day like that in a long time. It's not like we brought home a lot of food, but we caught a lot of fish, so we had a ton of fun. Now, I am going to flay up this kingfish. So, first thing I'm gonna do, make a cut by the head. Come all the way up to the head. Just like that. Next, I'm going to take my knife and work all the way down towards the tail, keeping my knife along the bones the whole time. Got it on video. <laughs> you got that? Uh -huh. There's a bunch of jacks in the canal right now because we just filleted the Sierra mackerel and they're all fired up. And there's also a manatee, but hopefully it comes up while I'm filleting this so you guys can see the manatee. Okay, there's that. Tail cut. Yes, you could just go like this with the kingfish and slide your knife all the way across, but if you do that, you're gonna miss meat around the backbone, so I'm not gonna do that. So, knife all the way down. Over these bones. Once you get on the other side, point your knife downwards because they do have a backbone, so you want to get all that meat and you'll get it better if you point your knife down. go. 
Look at that nice white meat, huh? Mm -hmm. The smaller the kingfish, the better the quality the meat is. A lot of times people stick their nose up to kingfish, but these little ones like this, the meat's not mushy at all. It looks exactly like the Sierra mackerel meat. It looks really, really good. Now we're going to take out the pin bones. You can feel how far up they go. If you run your finger or your knife right here, you can feel the bones, you can hear the bones. They go up to right there, I think is the last one. So I'm going to cut on both sides of the bloodline. And there we go. So this has the bones in there as well as some bloodline. We'll feed this to the fish too. Ready, Vic? Ready. Buffer fish got it. Today's one of those days where there's so many catfish. Lately, we've been coming out here and cleaning stuff and there's been like three or four and there's easily 40 down there. Yeah, sometimes we go out here and there's hundreds of catfish and then sometimes you see like one or two. I don't understand what it is. I don't know if other people are filleting fish or something so all the catfish are over there or it's not, it's not like the tides matter. It can be the exact same tide, the exact same time of the day and one day there'll be a bunch of catfish and one day they won't, there won't be any. I don't understand it. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fillet the other side of this then I will meet you guys in the kitchen. back to the kitchen so it's night for dinner it's just gonna be my mom and my dad and me and Victor so we got four cast iron skillets here which if you guys have watched my videos before you know how much I love these pans not sponsored or anything we just absolutely love them so this is what I got going on so far I have olive oil at the bottom of the pan I have some sliced tomatoes as well as some onion and then the fish on top I cut the bloodline out of all of them except for Victor's piece Victor was like I want to eat the bloodline <laughs> <laughs> I like it all right so the first thing I'm doing is normally I do wine last, but then you kind of rinse off your seasoning, so I'm doing wine first. Another thing, people always ask me, if kids are eating it, can I use wine? Yes, because you're cooking out the alcohol. I've been making this recipe for, I don't know, since I was like four years old, always using wine. And, and you've never caught a buzz, have you? <laughs> I've always been okay. Literally, like I've been making this exact recipe since I was like four or five. I could probably show you a photo of me <laughs> making it right now. <laughs> and then another thing about these pans is you want to have a lot of juice in there. If you don't have a lot of juice, they're going to kind of burn up and get dried out. So the more the merrier. And then also we serve this with rice. So after you eat your fish, you put the rice back into the pan and you can get all the extra seasonings that are left in there. And when you have extra juice, it's really good. Okay, next thing, salt and pepper. I don't think I've ever cooked anything in my life without putting salt and pepper in it. So we're doing salt and pepper. A lot of times when I use these pans, you guys ask me where you can get them. I will have a link in the description so you guys can find them. Next thing, garlic powder. For some reason, I was in the mood for rosemary today, so we're putting rosemary. I don't think we've ever put rosemary on it before, but I actually really like rosemary, so I'm adding some rosemary. And then we're doing some paprika. I'm also going to put on some cheese. Well, I know a lot of people think that you're crazy to put cheese on a fish dish, but you know what? I like cheese on my fish dish, and there's a lot of fish dishes with cheese on them. Some fresh grated cheese from Publix. The 
last and final step is your butter. You can't do it without butter. So, put a nice slice on each part of the fish, and as they cook and start melting, that butter is gonna melt right down in and be absolutely delicious. And then I'm also doing some grilled zucchini and squash. I just took the squash and the zucchini and made slices out of them, seasoned them with some olive oil and salt and pepper. These are gonna go straight on the grill at the same time that I put these on the grill and we're ready, so let's head out there. Yeah. Ooh, nice and hot. I think I'm gonna push these towards the back and then have the zucchini and squash in the front. Now, with these pans, we don't ever touch the stuff. We don't ever flip what's in it. We just let it cook the way it is. Leave them on the grill, just let them go. Wow. Look at that. They've been on for not even five minutes. Cast iron and a little like mitten for the end of your cast iron skillet. And there we go, there's our finished product, we're ready to go inside. Look at them. And the thing about these pans is even when you take them off, they still cook. You bring them inside and they're still cooking. When I first met Brooke and her family, this was like the way they cooked fish. This was the primary way. And the cast iron pans, eight years later, are still a family favorite. First of all, the fact that you can make everything in one pan, you have your tomatoes, your onions, the fish, all the flavors blend together. You have the juice, you put your rice in there after. We got fresh cereal mackerel, nice white firm flesh, super tender, juicy, and the rosemary really surprised me. I, did, I didn't think it was gonna be that good, but it's really good. Okay, Super on. good. I, I didn't think, I, when I think of rosemary, I think of potatoes, I don't think of fish, but I like it. I love rosemary. And the good thing about these pans, like Brooke says, everything stays hot, because cast iron retains heat, and it stays hot for a long time, so, so good. Seriously guys, try it. Like Vic said, that's my favorite part of these pans. I really enjoy eating my fish hot, and um, with these, you can take your time, Enjoy your, you know, your fish nice and slow, and it just stays hot through the whole, you know, till it's done. So I've always liked fish on these pants. Good job, bro. Tastes really good, bro. Tastes great. All right, guys. Well, the cereal mackerel turned out absolutely delicious. Again, if you guys are interested in those pans, I will put a link down in the description where you guys can find them. And we had an absolutely really fun day on the boat today. It's been crappy weather for like weeks, blowing really hard and we finally had a nice, calm, perfect day, so we had a lot of fun. And tomorrow, I think we're gonna go out and do almost probably the same thing. Victor really wants to catch a sailfish and cook one up for you guys, so maybe we'll do that tomorrow so you guys can see that video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.